What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode two of Rogue Reviews. This episode is Kong. Yeah. Saw it. For liked sure. it. I did. I liked it, too. Yep. Uh, what do we got? Directed by Jordan Vogt Roberts. How do you say that? Vogue? Vogue. Vo- Vo- might be French. Vogue, Vogue I don't Roberts. Know. Jordan Vogue Roberts. Uh, we got Tom Hiddleston. Samuel L. Jackson, Brie Larson, John C. Riley, John Goodman. Toby Kebble. Yep. Big cast, and I think they did well. I think they did well, um, but the guy that steals the show, both in size and just its pure story, is the monkey himself, Kong. Right, yes. right. He played a big role. He pulled it off. Yeah. I think the emotions they gave him, I thought was well done. Yeah, they did a good job of portraying his character with all the other characters combined. Um, The human characters, I think that was the one thing in this movie that kind of was a drawback to me, is some of the human characters were just... I think there were too many of them, and they tried to focus on all of them instead of highlighting a few people. I agree, yeah. They, uh... You know, you can kind of get a feel for, you know, who you should be attached to throughout movies, and it, it felt like everyone kind of got their their two cents in uh, so to speak and the in the beginning that was great i thought the beginning was was stellar i mean it, it it just trucked right along you got all the information that you needed for all the characters uh the whole kind of frat boy army thing was a little awkward to me but uh you got to know them a bit and it was cool because it kind of gave weight to just everyone's struggle in this film but I do agree. I think there was a lot of people. It was hard to get, you know, invested enough into these characters when something would happen. But I think that's yeah. one of the things that these monster movies struggle like recently. Even though if like it's not a monster movie, but like Transformers, it's like how much time should we spend on the human characters versus the you know the Autobots, or how right. much time should we spend on right. like Godzilla? This takes place in the same universe as Godzilla. They spent way more time on the human characters in Godzilla than they did in this movie i felt like godzilla that paid off a little better even though i wasn't like as invested in those characters um but this movie gave me a lot more kong which every time when he was on screen that was when the movie really really right 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 i think godzilla i think i think we like it more because it um it had this still sense of like wonder like kind of kind of that mythical thing with with Godzilla yeah. how um I don't know it was, it was just cool it, it he wasn't as in your face as Kong was in this movie and I think the cost of that was you don't it's like well there he is <laughs> I think Godzilla too was much more grounded where this movie kind of tried too hard at certain elements like one thing where it really tried and kind of fell flat for me was the comedy yeah. Um, they try to make it very jokey. I mean, the director's one of his last projects was like the uh, Nick Offerman stand-up comedy special for Netflix. So I was like, all right, you know, I, I was going along. The one positive thing that I thought was going to be a negative going in was John C. Riley. His comedy really worked for me. When I saw it in the trailers, I'm like, was this Dale from Step Brothers? And he took his <laughs> boats and hose, you know, to this island. And Although just that would have been out. amazing. Yeah, right? that, I mean. yeah that would have been a great <laughs> crossover, but... I was just like, how is this going to work? And his jokes and kind of his delivery of things was the best of all of them. And his character was like, had the most emotionally satisfying journey through this film. Yeah. You felt like you were really connected to him compared to everybody else. I agree. Yeah. You, uh, you had more ties with him. It felt like, uh, he was just far more genuine than yeah. everyone else, and yeah. uh, you felt more towards that. But I mean, but then again, you look at Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson. They uh, they had a great thing going on. You, yeah. you, they they stepped into their roles. I think. I mean, I think everyone did. Yeah. It's yeah. just that John C. Riley kind of had this, you know, just more of an open emotion to him, and that f- let you get more involved with him. For so. sure. For sure. Um, yeah. One thing I really did like about this movie, too, was, like, the whole cinematography. They were really pushing this Apocalypse Now vibe, like, Vietnam. I liked it. I liked the camera work in this movie. It looked looked beautiful. And um, 
just the sunsets and like all of those parallel shots, you know, with Khan coming up. You, you see him in yeah. the trailers, and it's just it's pretty gorgeous. Yeah, they pretty much took advantage of every Kodak yeah fire behind Kong moment like that yeah. they could do. But uh, I like the camera work. I thought it was I thought it was cool. It was very uh, it wasn't so, so stop and go like movies are nowadays. Yeah. They had the panning shots and you know sets led into each other and i thought it was, i thought it was well done i i like that a lot um again the comedy thing like i totally agree some of the jokes are just like not at the right time yeah <laughs> like, it's just like it's kind of there's some like dialogue issues with that too yeah. it's just like huh haha, funny yeah yeah right, I, I, I don't know if i'm supposed to be like yeah it's like i don't know if i should be like concerned for the characters or be laughing at the situation i don't know it was it, it was a little weird like uh like how it would throw just jokes in these random spots where it's like is this supposed to be funny like yeah. is this a funny time right now but yeah anyway um i thought the soundtrack was good i i mean i instantly love scores when they have electric guitar behind everything because yeah. it's just so cool having that you know uh, just distorted, reverby. I don't know. I, I liked it. I, I yeah. thought it was really well done. Yeah, it went back to the whole Vietnam vibe. A lot of CCR, you know, a lot, yeah, of, a lot, a lot of, of 70s music songs. that just yeah. just fit the movie and the mood right. and everything. Right. They really tried to uh, put you in the time period, for yeah, sure. for sure. It, it wasn't bad. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't bad enough for me to knock it like crazy. It, it, the things that got me were, um, I don't know, the like I said, the comedy... Uh, some of the back and forth between the soldiers was just a little weird to me. The creatures were cool. Yeah, uh, Kong's not the only badass in this movie. Yeah, there's um, a lot of there's a lot of cool design creatures that pop yep. up throughout and the movie, and they look great. Yeah, like it was really cool, really innovative. Um, I'm always knocking it out of the park. Well, yeah, I mean, you know what you're gonna get. Yeah, John Goodman was good. Yeah, uh, he had a different character than I thought initially. You know, I thought uh, the trailer kind of you know makes him to be a certain way and he he didn't really turn out that way he kind of played that um brian cranston role like from godzilla but in a different way which i enjoyed i like i like this movie how it also kind of flips the whole like we've seen king kong story told dozens of different ways you know and it's always the same ends up the empire state building and I think for this <laughs> this movie, you know, they really kind of changed it up. One, because they had to, because if the Kong that we see climbing the Empire State Building fights this Godzilla that we've seen in the movie, Godzilla would just step on him because Godzilla is the tight of the Empire State Building. So they had to make him really big. They had to kind of change up the story, which I really kind of liked that whole new angle that nobody's ever really done before. There is a scene at the end of the movie... Yeah, there is a post credit scene, so stay in the stay in and, the seats. And uh, yeah, exciting to say yeah. the least. Uh, there's yeah. a there's a lot of goodies coming. Yeah, a lot of big things coming. Not to put too fine a point on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's go to the rating. For sure. What do, what do you give this movie? Um, I was entertained. I wasn't off put too much, so I'm gonna give it a seven. That's that's kind of where I'm at right now too. Despite you know some offbeat comedy and some clunky dialogue and the fact that sometimes you feel like you're you're kind of watching a horror movie where you're smarter than the characters. You're like, oh no, don't do that, you stupid no. But at the end of the day, the parts with Kong were way entertaining enough to just divert all that away. And just make it a very enjoyable movie. So I think, yeah, seven for me as well. Awesome. Seven out of ten. There we go. Kong. Yep. Go see it. I, I'd say go see it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely worth your worth your time. And on IMAX too, I mean, it's it looks really good. Yeah. All right. That's episode two for Kong Skull Island. Next episode is Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. pretty excited for that i'm really nervous about it but pretty excited for it i mean i caught a eight minute sneak peek at disney california adventure and a lot of fears i had about the movie were put to rest we shall see yeah we shall all right everyone give us a like subscribe tell your friends uh 
yeah, and thanks for watching. We'll uh, see you next time.